Welcome. Welcome to New Light Living Podcast. I'm Ulrika Sullivan. I'm an intuitive spiritual life coach and a galactic astrologer. This video is a galactic astrology reading of the new moon in Libra solar eclipse on October 14th, 2023 at 21 degrees and seven minutes. And this solar eclipse is conjunct the south node. And the south node is almost exactly aligned to the constellation Virgo and also the constellation Boots. But if we go back to the Virgo constellation, the fixed star Spica is highlighted. I chose to highlight Spica today because um, Spica is associated with feminine energy, almost like that inner child texture of energy. So it's a, it's a very feminine energy that uh, is aligned with the South Node. But also, as I mentioned, the Boots constellation and the fixed star Actress is also they both are aligning at 24 degrees of Libra. And sometimes uh, the actress energy is stronger. Uh, actress is more of a masculine energy, but also very much uh, associated with emotional healing and the whole process of that. It's a consciousness more so. But in this solar eclipse, uh, I chose to highlight Spica because the... Uh, new moon here is ruled by Venus and Venus is now at five degrees of Virgo. Do you have actress or speaker in your chart? Are you curious about your own galactic alignments? Download my galactic alignments reference guide. Uh, link is in the, at the bottom here in the description box. And Venus is opposite the Royal star Fomalhaut at this um uh, solar eclipse. And if you recall, Fomalhaut is a royal star located at four degrees of Pisces. And for the longest time, Saturn has been within orb to be aligned with Fomalhaut. But now at this solar eclipse, this new moon in Libra, Venus is kind of taking over the angelic guidance that is uh, available to us here uh, and it's now um, received, so to say, to us through Venus, through that alignment to Fomalhaut. And again, inner child energy is coming through here uh, with Venus's rulership of this new moon solar eclipse. So it's an invitation to us to tap into that inner child, that energy of awe and wonder. Uh, this solar eclipse is really having some energetic momentum, and I'll go through that in a moment, but I, I want you to keep that in mind. It's a very feminine, uh, uh, young energy, if you will, inner child type of energy that is ruling and influencing this uh, solar eclipse. What I do in these videos, I put an outer layer of fixed stars, celestial bodies, and galactic points uh, to the traditional Western uh, tropical astrology wheel. And this is to help us start to relate to these fixed stars, for example, uh, that allows us to wander out in the cosmos even further than our own solar system. So our multidimensional self wants to relate, wants to connect with our galactic heritage that many of us have. So I hope this reading will provide you with inspiration. And in these videos, I uh, pull out three key themes that I see are relevant here to this new moon solar eclipse in Libra. The three themes that I have pulled out for today's reading is first, a focus on Orion. And I'll walk you through how I uh, come to that conclusion. So Orion is highlighted in this solar eclipse. The second theme will be centered around the momentum and uh, activations by multiple galactic points at this solar eclipse. And I'll walk you through that as well. The third theme is associated with new beginning energy. And I'll walk you through uh, alignments to the planets that have just shifted signs 
and associations galactically to that sense of new beginning uh, as a planet is moving into a new sign such as Venus has now entered Virgo, but also the asteroid Haumea has entered now Scorpio and sitting there at zero degrees. So there's a lot of other alignments that has to do with, with shifting signs. So the third theme will be um, associated with new beginnings. Before we go into the three themes, show you how to find both actress and speaker. And it's fairly easy in the night sky to see uh, if you know where Big Dipper is. And then you can just kind of draw a line from the end of the handle there to actress. And if you can, and if you continue, you also will find speaker. I included uh, an image here of speaker. To, uh, and she is associated, as I said, the fixed star of speaker is associated with uh, feminine energy. It's a balanced feminine energy. And what I mean with that is that both the masculine parts and the feminine parts of the energy is very balanced. It's also uh, associated with that inner child playfulness, very earth um, connected uh, to physical realm. If you, you can see her uh, branch there in her hair, but this is a, um, uh, image that you can um, bring with you uh, association here with speaker uh, that I highlighted at this uh, uh, solar eclipse. So next we will go into the first theme. So here we have the first theme and I call the way forward is shown to us. And here we can see there's a number of green arrows, trines with flowing energy that is pointing to the constellation of Orion. And I'll walk you through what I see here. First, we have the solar eclipse here at the top of the chart, 21 degrees, is making an exact trine to Orion fixed star Bellatrix at 21 degrees of Gemini. And Bellatrix is associated with energy that is very decisive, very organized, very... Uh, um, to action taking, if you will. So it is really pointing to our ability to take action from this solar eclipse. And the solar eclipse is making a square to the Lyra Ring Nebula M57 here. And if you recall from the full moon in Aries video recently, we talked about the ring nebula here and uh, the the ring nebula itself is at the end of a star's life cycle. That's what causes the, uh, the nebula of gas, et cetera, around the star. And this square signifies this end of a cycle invitation to a rebirth. And I just wanted to point out that square to the ring nebula as well. Um, while this theme is focused on the flowing energy, I wanted you to just kind of connect with that, the rebirth energy. And the south node here um, that is conjunct the solar eclipse is making an exact trine as well to Orion Alnitak at 25 degrees of Gemini. And Alnitak is actually the peacemaker energy uh, within the Orion constellation. It's very much more feminine energy here uh, associated with this fixed star, the peacemaker, the contemplation. So here, the south node is um, linking in with the, the fixed star Alnitak to show us the flowing energy of peace. So, interestingly, the south node is making an exact square to Canis Minor Procyon at 26 degrees of Cancer. And we've talked about uh, Procyon in, in prior videos as well. But basically, Procyon is associated with energy of new spiritual technology. And it's interesting here that um, the south node is making a square to Procyon. Invitation. This is an invitation to... Um, bring in new spiritual technology through the energy of peace. 
that's how I translate this trine and a square between the south node and uh, Orion Almitak and uh, the square to Canis Minor Procyon energy. And then we have Mars and Jupiter are each making a trine to Orion Betelgeuse at 29 degrees of Gemini. And Betelgeuse is in uh, associated with energy around achieving. So together, Mars expanded here by, by Jupiter and linked in in a trine, aligned in a trine with Betelgeuse is really emphasizing this um, expanding action taking type of energy archetypally. In so there's a lot of momentum here in, in these trines that are going on. And all of them, <laughs> all trines are pointing to the Orion constellation. Now, I want to show you here the Orion constellation, um, which many of us are very familiar with um, identifying in the sky. And what I see here is that Orion constellation um, has gone through uh, an evolution from extreme polarity to enlightenment and unity consciousness. And it's really showing the way for our own um progression here on earth and many of us have galactic heritage in the uh, orion constellations either through in, um, incarnation in a physical body or non-physical body over the course of our soul's journey so many of us feel very drawn to the orion constellation for that reason and now this solar eclipse is highlighting uh, the south node, which is really that release of karma that we're invited to actually take action on. And what we mean here is actually uh, action spiritually. Uh, spiritual action is about letting go of the past uh, and allowing ourselves to forgive, accept, and um, allowing that energy to pass through us instead of holding on to it and trying to uh, make it into something and, and that keeps us stuck. And there's no coincidence here that the Shapley attracted the black hole that is the biggest driver of the universe that known today uh, in terms of universal wisdom is involved here around the south node at this time. And also that the actress uh, energy also uh, conjunct here, the South Node, is part of the overseeing matrix of energy uh, that is ensuring that Earth is progressing, is evolving. And this, in summary, Orion constellation is hugely important for us at this solar eclipse. And if you have a galactic heritage in association with the Orion constellation, you may feel the solar eclipse even stronger. Because, And if you're curious, maybe you have alignments in your galactic chart to Orion constellation. Find out. Download my galactic alignments reference guide. Orion is really showing us the way forward. Orion has evolved from extreme polarity to oneness, unity consciousness, uh, compassion, that energy signature. So here we have the, the way forward shown to us with all these beautiful trines in alignment here to the Orion constellation at this solar eclipse. So I wanted to show you here this image of the galactic points that we're currently working with. Uh, and as you may know, the galactic center is our uh, 27 degrees of Sagittarius, is our own Milky Way black hole that's driving our solar system. And then we go, uh, come to the supergalactic center at two degrees of Libra. And Libra, as you know, is, has to do with interaction and relationships, uh, energy, and the um, supergalactic center is is driving around, I would say, 20 to 50 galaxies that we, we estimate 
And it has to do with our interactions beyond our galaxy, relationships, uh, expanding um, relationship dynamics between ourselves and others. And then we get to the great attractor at 14 degrees of Sagittarius, which is really a, a bigger, even bigger <laughs> driver in the universe. Uh, and we're thinking about 5,200,000 um, galaxies or more that the great attractor is involved in driving. And of course, uh, Sagittarius is... Uh, our energy around uh, expansion, vision, um, integration. So the great attractor is um, is huge. And, and then we get to the Shapley attractor, which is, you know, it's hard to put our words to it, what, what that means at two degrees of Scorpio. And here we have a multiverse, right? 100,000 galaxies or more. It's hard to um, get our heads around uh, this force of universal wisdom. And interestingly, this solar eclipse here now, it, Mars is conjunct the Shapley attractor, which also makes it into a, a very personal Mars. It's a personal uh, energy action taking energy right so shapley attractor is is a huge um influencer on this solar eclipse in my opinion but there is more so here uh, i'm going to walk you through all the beautiful trines that we have to various galactic points at the solar eclipse and we start of course identify uh, where you have mars here and you can see Mars is conjunct the Shapley attractor there at two degrees, almost two degrees of um, Scorpio. And I also want to say that if we look ahead, the next eclipse we have on October 28th, 2023, is actually conjunct the Shapley attractor. So the universe is trying to show us here that this is important. It's important for our evolution. It's big quantum energy at play here. So I'll walk you through what I see here. Let's start with Saturn. Saturn is in a trine with the Shapley attractor. At, you can see here um, Saturn at zero degrees of Pisces uh, in a beautiful trine with the Shapley attractor at two degrees of Scorpio. And then we have Chiron at 17 degrees of Aries, trining the great attractor at 14 degrees of Sagittarius. And we also have Pluto trining the supergalactic center at two degrees of Libra. And lastly, the North Node is trining the galactic center at 27 degrees of Sagittarius. So Mars and Saturn here in connection with the Shapley attractor at this solar eclipse is asking us to go to the depth of our soul to find out what truly drives us, what drives us from within. And Chiron here trying the great attractor and the North Node uh, trining the galactic center is really asking us to heal the self both North Node and Chiron in Aries are very focused on the self and that uh, trying to um, uh, fire sign Sagittarius is really asking you to bring out what is your vision and that vision needs to come from within. And lastly, Pluto uh, in trying with the supergalactic center located in Libra, two degrees, Libra, where the solar eclipse is taking place. Pluto is here to transform us permanently, and it has to do with you, the relationship with yourself, but also your relationship dynamic with others beyond, beyond your family, beyond uh, what you can uh, imagine at this moment, because part of it and the guidance that we're receiving from Pluto is to start to relate beyond our physical world. Pluto is reminding us of the physical world at this time now in Capricorn. But very soon, uh, Pluto is going to move into Aquarius, which is very much about what is not seen and air, you know. So 
it, it is really a call from Pluto uh, trining beautifully here with the supergalactic center in Libra uh, to utilize the universal wisdom that you have access to. First, I'd like to um, highlight Mars's alignments to conjunct Shapley Attractor, but we also have Haumea here at the zero degree of Scorpio now. And opposite all of that is Andromeda Mirage at zero degree of Taurus. This is a call for activating the inner child. Uh, Andromeda Mirage is a very uh, feminine, uh, young, uh, pure energy uh, at zero degree of uh, Taurus here. And that coupled with the Mars Shapley attractor, Homea bringing in that new earth blueprint in harmony with the elements, in harmony with the sky, the earth, water. This is an, uh, a call for harmonizing, balancing uh, this beautiful new energy that is coming in. Mercury is also in a new sign. He is in Libra now at 17 degrees, opposite exact Chiron. And Chiron is aligned with the fixed star Tau Ceti in the Cetus constellation. What we have here is Mercury and Chiron balancing karma uh, for ourselves, but also in our relationships. And that uh, Tau Ceti alignment is the spiritual warrior, but highlighting the wound that we need to kind of, again, go deep in our soul to dig up because now Mercury is here in, in Libra where the solar eclipse is taking place, allowing us and calling us to speak about it, to communicate about it. And by sharing, we can let go of past trauma. Mercury's alignment to Orion Regal here in a trine is favoring the communication and interaction with others to resolve karma and let it go. And then we have Venus here in an opposition to the royal star Fomalhaut. And if you recall, Saturn has been uh, maintaining an alignment in conjunction with Fomalhaut for quite a while. Now, Saturn has moved out of that alignment. So Venus is taking over. And the way I uh, translate this, that uh, Saturn has been downloading the, the lesson here from the angelic realm for quite a while, working with us uh, to highlight and make aware that lesson in Pisces. Now, Venus is taking over in Virgo to really integrate that lesson the that we have support from the angelic round to uh, integrate that lesson into our daily lives and it's important here to note that black moon lilith is aligned in a conjunction to the another royal star regulus which is the heart of the lion regulus uh, is associated also with angelic energy with Archangel Raphael, which has to do with the green ray, the healing ray of energy. So there is an invitation here in, at the solar eclipse to heal the lessons, heal and move on the new beginning energy here in the early degrees of Virgo. Uh, it's allowing us with angelic support to heal and uh, integrate the lessons that we've had a chance to uh, get alerted to through Saturn's work with Fomalhaut in the past. And then we have Sedna at zero degree. She's been hanging out there for uh, a while, zero degrees of Gemini, conjunct the Pleiades constellation. And again, this is a new earth a blueprint energy that she's working with the Pleiades to bring this way, this uh, towards the Milky Way and Earth. And Sedna is working closely with Saturn here, both at zero degrees to 
um, make sure that we are taking full advantage of this new beginning, this new earth blueprint that is ushered in. Then we have Saturn also at zero degree here in Pisces, working closely in opposition with uh, the regular fixed star in the Leo constellation here. So there's there is still um, this collaboration from the angelic realm uh, working with Saturn. So I want to also acknowledge that Pluto's squares to the nodes here are a longstanding platform for change and allowing that uh, collaboration with between Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto is of course the the backbone of this new earth energy that we are experiencing but at this solar eclipse it has this um massive universal wisdom engagement with the galactic points in combination with uh, shifting uh, key planets are having alignments in early degrees often new signs it, it is an indicator of that new earth energy coming in in summary, this solar eclipse, the new moon in Libra, is a powerful one, conjunct the south node, aligned with uh, constellations of Virgo and the fixed star Spica and the constellation Boots, fixed star Arcturus, which is a overarching emotional healing energy matrix uh, of a feminine character that is influencing heavily this solar eclipse. And the ruling planet Venus opposite the royal star um, Fomalhaut now taking over Saturn's important work of highlighting for us uh, the lessons we have to do spiritually, but now Venus being fully supported through angelic energy here, both with Royal Star Regulus and opposite Fomalhaut here is fully supported and asking us to start the integration of this new earth blueprint. The fact that Orion constellation is so highlighted at this solar eclipse speaks to uh, that we are shown the way forward from extreme polarization that it is possible to reach enlightenment and unity consciousness. Orion has evolved through eons uh, into that energy and is showing us the way. And also the fact that this solar eclipse is engaging a number of galactic points in trines, in flowing energy, highlighting the momentum uh, that we are in now speeding up the uh, our ability to take action and release karma perhaps associated with our lifetimes our galactic heritage with the orion constellation uh, at this time and lastly the new beginning energy that is present here in the, the solar eclipse by planets moving signs into new signs, but also some of our planets and alignments at the very zero degree position suggests that there is a new beginning that we are invited to take part in, and specifically Homea's entry into Scorpio here, uh, supported by, of course, Sedna at zero degree of Gemini, and Saturn also now at zero degree position of Pisces in retrograde. This is uh, somewhat of a new beginning energy present here at this new moon in Libra, and we're invited to take action in peace. I also have a couple of questions for you uh, to work with uh, tailored to this solar eclipse energy. The first question is, how can you release emotional limitations? And what I mean with that is often we see ourselves as much smaller than we actually are. Smaller, not size-wise physically, but spiritually. And this is an invitation to uh, stretch those limitations or even remove them. Uh, so how, are, how can you expand? How can you... Um, get momentum to be curious, even more curious. And sometimes that is 
to go to our inner child and asking ourselves, what does that inner child need to expand, to come back to life? The second question is, what drives you from within? And that is a link to that inner child, what it needs. But this is the adult self that is speaking. What drives you from within? Because often it's so easy to go uh, in the external world and say, okay, I want this or, or this is how I want to do it. But here we're asking a question about what drives you from within. So this is great to uh, contemplate and allow to come forward at the solar eclipse. The third question is, what is your new multidimensional perception of your uh, reality? And that's a big question. But now we're entering a time where we're asked to relate to quantum information. And that is a, a question that is helping us to expand. How can you utilize your imagination? Because uh, imagination is linked into that universal energy where there are no limitations. So utilize your imagination, your dreams. Uh, to expand into that multidimensional perspective of yourself and your environment. And if you're curious about your own galactic alignments, download my galactic alignments reference guide. There's a link in the description box. Thank you so much for being here with me on New Light Living Podcast. I love doing these readings for you. I will be back soon with another one. Bye.